Okay, so the uh, the final group then we're going to look at are the uh, noble gases, and these are group eight. So the noble gases are situated here on the periodic table. Now, because they're group eight, remember the number represents the number of electrons that are in the outside shell of the atoms of these elements within this group. Now, that's as we'll see, that's the case for all of these atoms, let's say, that are within this group, they have eight electrons in their outer shell. Now, with the exception of helium, helium has two electrons because it only has one shell, and that first shell, as we remember, it can contain two electrons in the outside shell. But the noble gases, basically the idea behind it is that they don't need, they're the most, they're the least uh, reactive elements on the periodic table. And the reason they're the most the least reactive is because they have a full outer shell of electrons and um, they don't need to gain or lose electrons in order to have that outer shell they have a full outer shell and as a result of that they're very inact they're very inactive uh, they, they will not react easily uh, with any other atoms for example in the environment so therefore they're known they're known as inert gases or they are um, just just they're the least reactive and they're known as the noble gases. Now we're just going to look at two examples. So we have helium, which is this one here. So helium is the second element on the periodic table. And then we have neon, okay, which is the tenth element on the periodic table. So, so we have helium here. So this one is helium. So again, it's just the Bohr structure. And this one here is neon. Now, if we have a look, so we notice that helium, its atomic number is 2, and if you remember, the atomic number represents the number of protons that are present in the nucleus. The protons are the positively charged subatomic particles. So we notice here, if we look, so this is a Bohr structure of um, helium, and we notice that the red, the, the, the two red circles represents the protons, it has two protons, and the green circle represents the number of neutrons, it has two neutrons. Uh, the number of protons and neutrons when you add them up is 4 and that represents the mass number. So we can see that the mass number, and if you look on the periodic table, the, the bigger number, which is the mass number, represents is 4 and that represents the protons and the neutrons. Now also as well, we know that helium, if, it's, if it has two protons, then it also has two electrons. And we can see that the two electrons are here in this outer shell. Um, Again, the outer shell can only contain two electrons, so it's full. So therefore, it's not reactive. So it's it's not going to react with another with another atom, for example, because it has its its outer shell is full. When its outer shell is full, it's stable. If it's stable, it doesn't need to react. Um, and then if we have a look down here, so we have neon. So we can see neon is the tenth element. Its atomic number is ten. So that means, and we can't see it here, but it'll, it'll have 10 protons within the nucleus. And we can see that the mass number is roughly 20. So if we subtract 10 from 20, that tells that there's also 10 neutrons. So there's 10 protons and 10 neutrons in the nucleus of an atom of neon. And um, if there's 10 protons, again, there's going to be 10 electrons. And we can see that the configuration, which is just the way the electrons are spread out, within the shells outside the nucleus, we can see that we have uh, we have two electrons in the first shell, and then we have eight electrons in the second shell. So therefore, the outside shell is full. It has the full eight electrons, so it doesn't need to take or lose any electrons in order for it to be full. So again, this is what makes the, the noble gases, which are the group eight elements, it makes them the least react. They're not reactive. They don't react uh, with other atoms uh, within their environment because they have a full outer, they have a full shell of electrons. Okay, so if we think, so some of the uses then, so helium, for example, as you can see here, okay, so it has atomic mass of four, it's a very light element. Um, and as a result of that, like if we look, like it's, it's, it's element two, if we think about oxygen, for example, oxygen so the air is made up of oxygen which has in it which has a mass of uh, roughly 16 nitrogen which has a mass of 14 and then you have carbon dioxide which is carbon and oxygen which is a which is a combination of these but you can see there in comparison to helium its mass is four 
So for example, the mass of oxygen is 16. Helium is very, very light. In, it's, it's much lighter than um, the atoms that make up the air that, that, we, that is around us. And as a result of that, it's less dense. So as a result of that, um, helium is, is, is not very dense. Um, and as a result, it'll, it will rise up in the air. And this can be taken advantage of when, for example, helium blooms. When we take hot air balloons, for example, uh, helium can be used in hot air balloons to, uh, to do basically to get them to float. And it's also a combination of helium and air, the air being heated as well. Um, then if we take neon, for example, neon is very unreactive. Now, if you pass a current of electricity, so if you take neon and you trap it into a glass tube, and then you put electricity through that tube, what's going to happen is uh, they will give off very distinctive colors like we can see here. So they actually glow, they glow very, very brightly. And this is can be used then, like for example, in shops as advertising to catch people's eye. Uh, so we see neon lights like this here, for example, this is a, this is these are neon lights. And basically what's happening is there's neon gas inside a glass tube and then um, electricity is being passed through the gas and what that's doing is it's exciting the electrons within neon and those excited electrons are giving out light that's a very particular color and it's very bright like like what we see here so that's where we get neon lights are used are one use of the neon which is a noble gas so there so there are two uses of um two of the noble gases, helium and neon, for example. Now, another thing that's very, very important as well is in relation to the sun. So how does the sun work? So the sun is a massive like reaction, chemical reaction that's happening uh, over 98 million miles away in the depths of space. And it produces all the light uh, that we see around us. Now, how does that happen? Well, what happens is, so if we take what basically what happens is if we take hydrogen and hydrogen when it's compressed together and um, it's compressed it combines together and it produces helium and that pressing together of hydrogen atoms and then being forced together they form together and they produce helium that produces huge amounts of energy and we'll just have a look at like what happens in relation to that so what basically what's happening is within the sun you have hydrogen and if we look, so this is hydrogen on the periodic table. So we can see that hydrogen has, has one proton and one neutron within the nucleus of the atom. So what we're looking at here, so this here is just um, the nucleus of a hydrogen atom. So imagine, so imagine this is your hydrogen atom. So this is just the nucleus of it. And then outside that, then you have, you'd have, for example, electrons. You'd have an electron now the electron isn't very important in relation to this process but what happens is so you take two hydrogen atoms so this is one hydrogen atom and this is another hydrogen atom and you basically force them together and what happens is the two the two the two hydrogen nucleuses of the two hydrogen atoms come together and they form they change into a new atom so now all of a sudden you have an atom so you, you had two hydrogen atoms they've been squashed together forced together and they combine together to form one nucleus. And now what you'll notice is that this new nucleus has two protons. And we know that if we look on the periodic table, for example, um, helium, if an atom has two protons within the nucleus of the atom, it is helium. So what happens is basically you get these two hydrogen atoms are being fused together. And as a result of that, they're, they're changed into helium. But in that process, it releases huge amounts of energy. And um, so it's like it's it's kind of the opposite of a nuclear reaction. Like with a nuclear reaction, the nucleus of the atom is split apart and that splitting apart releases a lot of energy. But in the case of the sun, what's basically happening is you're getting hydrogen atoms and you're they're being fused together. And when they're fused together, they they turn into helium and then that releases massive amounts of energy. And this is known as fusion nuclear fusion and that's that is basically how the sun how the sun produces its energy 
um, and what causes the sun to continue on reacting. And it's been reacting now for millions of years and it will continue reacting for millions of years as well. But that's what, uh, like if you're at the level of the sun, for example, this is what's happening. Basically, you're getting hydrogen atoms being crushed together, producing helium and then loads of energy being produced. So again, helium, like that's like, so if you take hot, like these are two elements, for example, and are on the periodic table, and they're very very important to this process is what keeps everything alive on our planet. And um, this process of nuclear fusion, uh, if this was to stop, the sun, there would be no sun. If there's no sun, there'd be no light or heat reaching the reaching the planet. So it's a really really important process that happens. Um, and it happens all the time. It's happening right now as you sit here listening to this video. So if we just, I'm going to just show you a short video and I think we will leave it at that then. So guys, thank you for your attention. If we could open up the sun, we'd see layers of dense hydrogen gas, hundreds of thousands of miles deep. And at its center, the core, the sun gives birth to light. Forged in one of the most violent reactions in the universe, nuclear fusion. The specific nuclear reaction that powers the sun is fusion. Fusion of hydrogen into helium. You take two hydrogen atoms, you ram them together, and what's left over is a helium atom. It sounds simple enough, but it's not. It's actually hard to get two atoms to fuse. Uh, two protons have the same charge. They're both positively charged. They want to repel each other. Protons don't like to get close together. They have to come together with a huge amount of energy or velocity to get close enough to begin to fuse. And that's very, very rare. To force protons together takes immense amounts of heat and pressure generated by the invisible hand of gravity. The sun contains 99.8% of all the matter in the solar system. That's a lot of mass. All that mass pulls the sun together with unimaginable gravitational force. But with gravity crushing things down, things get close enough together and nuclear fusion happens. In this nuclear compactor, hydrogen atoms slam together 100 million quadrillion quadrillion times each second. Some of these collisions are so powerful that atoms fuse, releasing energy. When the protons come together, to bind together, they lose a little bit of mass, and that mass gets converted into energy. And every second of every day, about five million tons of stuff is being converted to energy. It's amazing. Okay, so that's the, that's the process that I was just explaining there. Okay, guys, thank you for your attention, and I will talk to you soon.